Hello, I'm Rudy Kistler, and this is one approach to painting. Today I'm going to be painting one of my favorite objects. It's a French-made copper saucepan that my friend Joe Pirtle gave to me for my birthday. I've decided to paint this copper saucepan because I'm going to be doing an exercise in color matching. Copper is a notoriously difficult color to color match, and that's why we call it copper rather than light red or light orange. It seems to have a color of its own. So I've chosen vermilion as my base color for the copper. Um, I wanted a red that wasn't too cool. Um, when you add white to a cool red, it tends to make pink. And if you add white to a warm red, it tends to make light red. And I see the copper as not being pink at all, um, but being more of a light reddish orange. So I think the vermilion is going to give me a good match for that. And now to neutralize that, I found that hooker's green is going to be an excellent color um, to neutralize the red and create a neutral. Um, also, by mixing them together, I found that they actually made quite a nice copper color themselves. And so that's the color that I'm going to be using today to paint. Um, I chose the green because it's the, it's the complementary color of red. Technically, it's kind of a teal, but the green neutralizes it quite well. And then because it makes an orange and I want to neutralize that, the complement of that would be blue or a bluish purple. And so I've chosen purple um, for my color to neutralize that. So these three colors will allow me to get a good dark neutral, a good copper color, and now with the addition of white, I'll be able to get my grays and other things. Given that the composition is based entirely in reds and whites, um, again, I want to start the canvas off in the complementary color so I can get the greatest range possible. So I'm going to prime the canvas in a mixture of hooker's green and, and white, which will give me a mid-tone green, and from that I'll be able to bring it up. I've mixed up this copper color with a mixture of vermilion and hooker's green, and now I need to mix my neutrals for the background, for the, um, the tabletop and the dark background and the, the spoon as well, um, as well as the handles on the saucepan and the lid. So I'm going to do that by mixing all three colors. Um, this brown copper color will get neutralized by the purple, um, so I'll just mix up a new pot of that. Vermilion's quite a weak pigment compared with Hooker's Green, so I'm going to be using a lot more Vermilion than Hooker's Green, about 75% Vermilion to 25% Hooker's Green. So this is a perfect mixture of um, Hooker's Green and Vermilion, which gives me this kind of neutral brown color. It's neither red nor green, and so that's as far as I can go there. If I add either more of the colors, it's gonna push them in those two directions. So now it's time to add the purple. I'll just start with a little bit. Now you can see that as I add the purple, it's tending towards a warm color. So to neutralize that, to try to get a perfect dark neutral, I just need to add more green. So if it's a bit on the warm side, add your cool color. If it's a bit cool, add your warm color. It's getting there, but it's still a bit warm. It's quite difficult to tell warm and cool when it's such a dark color. So I like to just smear a bit on a piece of white paper. And um, when it becomes more transparent, you can get a general idea of the temperature of the color. So I'm just gonna add a bit more green. Before I, it's going a bit green though, so before I add any more green, I might just try a bit of purple because purple's a cool color as well. And whenever I experiment with this, it's better to pull a little bit of your pool of color out and work with that. That way if it doesn't work, you haven't spoiled your whole pot of color. And I can discard that. But if it works, then I can move it back in and add more. So I'm just gonna add a bit of purple to that. Excellent, I'm pretty happy with that as my dark neutral. So now I'm going to go ahead and mix up two more tints of that, a mid-tone gray and a light gray. And whenever I mix white with it, I'll also be able to see how the temperature is, and if it's a bit out of whack, I can adjust it then. As acrylic dries a bit darker than when you put it on, um, I'm finding that my light tone is probably actually going to be more of a mid-tone. Um, so what I might do is just mix one more and then I'll have four neutrals uh, instead of three, which is fine. Just give me a greater range. So I've got my four neutrals up the top and then I'll just take my copper mixture. This is the darkest of the copper mixture, so it'll be to the left near my dark neutral. And I might go ahead and mix up one tint of that as well. So now I've got these six mixtures, plus I'll put out the three colors plus white that I'm using and be able to mix from there, but this is a good start. 
So now I'm going to begin the painting by painting the largest area, which is the background, um, which is some sort of gray. Obviously a darker gray in the background and a lighter gray in the foreground. So I'll start with my mid-tone gray and be able to block in the composition and then I'll slowly bring the colors up from dark to light. I'm quite happy with the sketch, but everything's a little too far in the upper right hand corner of the composition. I've got this giant space down here where nothing's happening, so I might just move everything down just a couple of centimeters just to kind of uh, put it more in the middle of the composition. Might need to shorten the length of the spoon handle to make up for that, but I think that's alright. It'll make it for more of an interesting composition. So now that I've started with the background and done that in the mid-tone gray, um, I'll go ahead and take the darkest neutral and start to re-sketch out the saucepan to see if I can get it where I need it. So now I'm going to take the copper color and block in that color. So I might just come in with my next darkest neutral and cut back into that to clean up the top of the lid and reclaim that shape and it'll help to push the background back as well. It's starting to look a little bit more balanced now. So I always like to move from dark to light, um, opposite sides of the swinging pendulum. So now that I've put the darks in the background, I'll put some lights in the foreground and help to pull it out a bit. Okay, it's looking a bit better now. Um, the shadows kind of add a bit more of a dynamic shape to the composition rather than just being the still life itself. It's kind of more about the entire space rather than the objects themselves. I might just go ahead and do the spoon while I'm into my neutrals. Start with the darkest one. Then I'll just add a bit of the lightest one. Also the handle of the saucepan is a neutral and it's quite dark, so I'll make it darker than this one by using the darkest tone. Now my copper colors are really dark and really light, so I might just stay with the dark one while I'm fixing up the drawing and then I can go to the light, but I don't want to add highlights until I know that the drawing is solid. Now I'm just going to mix a bit of my dark neutral into the dark copper color and adjust some of the shadows on the bottom and also just make sure everything's still in shape. Now I'm going to go back in to my dark neutral in there. Uh, most of these colors are quite transparent so by putting them on thinly they don't go as dark as when I go a little bit more thick and a little bit more opaque. So I'm just going to chuck on a thicker coat of that to plunge that into the darkness. Now I'm just going to put some more dark neutrals around the place. Um, I'm finding that this dark neutral is actually a bit on the warm side, a bit on the brown. I think it's because I put um, the vermilion in it. I don't know that I really needed to. The, the green and the purple could make quite a nice neutral by themselves, both being cool colors. It'd stay nice and cool. So I might just take this bit of neutral and just manually mix in a bit of purple to cool it down. A bit of green to neutralize it. 
It's good not to go to full strength dark right away anyway because as you build up the composition you might find that you need something to be a little bit darker than everything else and then you can pull out a color like this and put it in. So I like to stay in the mid range for most of the painting until that point. Now it might be time to bring on some lights on the saucepan. Um, again, I think my light tone is just a bit too light, so I'm just going to mix the two, the dark and the light. And I might just add a little bit of vermilion. My light source is coming from the top right hand side, let's say 2 o'clock. Um, so the brightest point on the, the surface in front of the saucepan is just underneath the handle of the spoon and just to the slight right of the saucepan. So I'll start there and move away from that as I have less and less paint on the brush. So I might just try with my lightest gray and if that's not going to do the trick then I can put in a little bit of pure white and I can always glaze over it later if it gets too light. And you can see how that darkens the copper then. It actually deadens the color a bit as well. But um, the copper color is also drying at the same time and darkening. So um, it's good to not jump to any conclusions at this point. Just see what happens. That's looking good. Now I think the next stage is to go into my lightest copper color and start to bring up the highlights. Um, they're notoriously difficult on metal surfaces because the highlights are a combination of the reflected light from around the room, so warms and cools. Um, and also the um, shape of the saucepan and the lid determine how sharp that highlight is. So on a fairly flat area, like the side of the saucepan and on the top, it's kind of a dull glow, whereas on the rim where there's a sharp edge or a 90 degree angle, then you get a really crisp light. And so I'd, it's going to take me a while to get that, so I'd like to start bringing that up now. So that really brought up the highlights and I really feel like there's a good sense of the light in the picture, but the unfortunate thing is the color's all wrong. So it's just gotten a bit too washed out and fleshy. It's actually very similar to a flesh tone for my own skin color. So I might remember that for later, but for this it's just not going to do. So I think what I'll do is to add more vermilion to the mix and that will make it a bit more saturated. That looks all right. Now I might use a bit of the dark tone and mix a bit of vermilion into that as well to put back into the darks. So now it's moved in the opposite direction. It's too saturated and it's too red, but at least it's closer to what I want than the gray f washed out fleshy color I had before. So it's going to take time. Um, the See, the funny thing about painting is that um, if you're not getting what you want, it's just a matter of staying with the painting and keep and trying new things. And these acrylics, they dry really fast, so I can just try something out, and if it doesn't work, I'll try something again. So I'm going to leave off with the saucepan and the lid for now, go back into the background, work on the handle and on the spoon. So because the last thing I did with the background was to add this light bit, I might go back in and do a bit more dark work in the background. This over here is all quite flat, so I might try to modulate that as well. Um, like I said, this is the brightest area of the composition that I'm seeing there, so I might just start to bring in one of the mid-tones and dry brush that in. Now that I've made the background here nice and dark, I can start to bring up some lights on the handle. There's really just one kind of highlight along the edge, and then also a little bit towards the base here and then just a little flash of light on the opposite side of the ring there. Okay, so I'm still not happy with the color of the saucepan. I still feel it's too much on the red. And because of my palette using vermilion, hookers, green, and purple, I don't have any yellows to make my red more orange. So. There are a couple of things that I can do, two especially, 
um, that I'm going to try to get more of that copper color. The simplest one is just to darken everything. Um, by, darkening it, by darkening the reds and the red oranges, they'll become more browns, which is, tends to be the color of the copper. So I'm going to do that first. I'm gonna do that by putting a glaze on the copper saucepan and the lid. Um, you can do that two ways. You can just mix water with the colors to water it down and put a thin glaze over, um, but the water tends to break down the acrylic paint, so it's a bit wiser to use um, acrylic gel medium, and that tends to loosen up the paint and make for a better glaze. Um, I'll do that first, and then that way the copper saucepan and the lid will have a bit of time to dry before I go back on top, and then I'll discuss the second thing that I'm going to do. So I've just got this mid-tone copper color that I took by mixing a bit of the dark one and a bit of vermilion, and I'm just going to glaze that over the top, and that'll just darken everything just a little bit. So you can see that just by putting on that glaze, it already made it a bit more orange. Um, so I think that that's going to help quite a bit. Now the other thing that I can do is to try to affect simultaneous contrast. Simultaneous contrast happens when you put one color next to another and it influences either the temperature or the actual hue of that color. Velasquez famously said that he could paint the flesh of the Venus with mud if he would let you, him choose what color he put behind it. And that's what he's talking about, a simultaneous contrast. So because I want my red to shift more towards orange, um, I need something cooler and purplish in the background to influence that red to go towards the orange. So I've got my purple and I've just mixed that into my neutral to get a purplish neutral. And I'm going to change all of these neutrals in the background from that warmish neutral to more of a cool purple neutral. And I think that again, that'll bring out the orange and the copper. So I can see that just by doing that, it's already shifted towards the orange. So I'm going to also add a tint of this purple, and so I can come back down here into my lights and have those sync up. Now, the, uh, the glaze that I put on the pan and the lid did darken the lights and take those light reds more towards a light orange but they also had the effect of lightening my dark. So I need to put my darks back in, and I might just use my dark neutral for that, which is already a dark brown, and it's less of that dark copper color that I was using, and I might see how that affects it. Now I might go back into my spoon handle and um, add in some darks as well. And I'll do that with the purple, the dark purple, um, again to make that shift with simultaneous contrast. And just to add this extra color makes it much more interesting than just regular gray. And then a little bit of light purple for the lights. Now I can see that the handle on the saucepan needs a bit of work as well. It's far too light. I did that highlight quite wide because as is my nature, I like to cut in on either side of the highlight with darks to create that thin line rather than putting it in with a thin brush. So I'm going to go ahead and use my warm neutral for the handle because I've got the cool purple in the background and it'll just provide a contrast to be able to stand out a little bit. So I'll just take my darker neutral and then underneath there's a lot of, because the, the ground in front of the saucepan is light and the light's directly on it, it's giving us reflected light from the bottom. So the bottom of the handle is actually lighter than the top of the handle. It's still pretty light. I'm going to go ahead and go into the darker one and blend it in wet into wet. Now again, I did the same thing with the highlights on these rivets. I've just kind of put them in as blocks of white and I'll come around them with that darker tone and just focusing on the highlight. Now it's time to come back into the highlights on the saucepan, and I'm not going to be as generous as I was before because by adding too much of that light copper color, it ended up being washed out. So now I'm just gonna come in and lightly put it in wherever I see highlights. I'm just gonna mix it with a bit of the mid-tone copper color as well because I just don't wanna go too light.
Now also the dark area inside the copper saucepan is a bit of a black void right now. Um, so I might want to put in some dark mid-tone neutrals to try to break that up to show that there are reflections bouncing around in the inside of the pot. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and use the dark purple and just add a bit of white into it and maybe just a bit of that brown neutral to kind of give us a, an extra color. It's not one nor the other. It seems to be lightest around the base. So you can see that just that sh subtle shift helps to open up the, um, a bit of light into the pan. I'm also seeing just a little bit of that on the rim, on the inside of the rim as well. Now I might go ahead and put that white highlight on the handle of the spoon just to see what it's going to be like when I add that because I'm not sure exactly how light I can go until I add pure white. That really makes a huge difference, it really jumps out. So the next step is then to bring up the other highlights to kind of match them. So that really helps that metal stand out. Um, while I'm here, I might just correct a little mistake. I see I've got a bit of the copper color showing through next to that rivet, so just grabbing a bit of the mid-tone gray. It's a great reason for having these colors pre-mixed. That's too light. And now for the highlights on the copper. And so I'm just going to go back to that lightest copper color that I mixed and start to put that in. starting to get there. Now, these big flat areas are looking a bit boring um, and the glazes that I've done and things make it look a bit dirty. So I might try to clean that up with some pure mid-tone copper color um, put in in a kind of wet on wet style, um, which means that I'll start with the dark and then put the mid light tone into it while it's still wet and then I'll be able to get that feel of shiny metal. And I might just put a bit of vermilion into that just to change the hue a little bit. There we go, that really seems to shine, that really saturated light mid-tone red. And the wet into wet just makes the brush strokes blend together. Otherwise, when you do wet on top of dry, as the paint leaves the brush, um, it becomes a bit more of a dry brush or a scumble, and that dry application tends to take away from the feel of a polished metal surface. So the wet into wet's really doing it for me there. Now I'll just do that to the lid. Oh, I'm really liking that. Um, the other thing that you can do with metal to increase the amount of shine that you're getting is to juxtapose lights against darks. So the shinier the metal, the higher the contrast because it's reflecting everything in the room. And as you know, when metal gets dull, um, the lights become less light and the darks become less dark and everything kind of goes into a mid-tone dull kind of sheen. Um, but when it's highly polished, the highlights are crisp and white and the darks are nice and deep. So I've just put this kind of light mid-tone next to a really kind of dark mid-tone and then a light mid-tone and then a real dark tone. And so just that little area there uh, really gets the feeling of the, the shiny metal. So I might just do that in a couple of other areas if I can find it on there. Now I might just go back and fix up a couple of things that are bothering me, mainly the handle on the saucepan is still a bit um, vague, and so I'm just going to look for lights and darks to increase the contrast. This um, is a reflection of the shadow that's happening here and I think it's a little bit dark, so I might just do a bit of a glaze over the top of that with the copper color. Knocks it back nicely so it doesn't seem like it's painted on the surface, but it's just a reflection in the surface. Same with this handle up here, actually, now that I'm noticing it. Now, going back to the drawing, um, I might just try to clean it up. I, again, I'm finding that this bows down a little bit too much, so I might try to cut back in with a nice, clean, dark line to establish where the bottom of the pot exactly is. Now 
Now I might just clean up this bottom area by bringing the, um, the cool purple shadow down. Now I want to bring these lights back up, but I think before I do that, I'm going to increase the darkness of the shadows just a little bit um, so that I increase the contrast of the overall painting. I'm not just making the painting lighter. So going in again with that dark purple, a bit of dark neutral. Now I can come in with my lights. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the ground now. Um, and I think the painting's coming together and, and could be finished quite quickly. But I just want to make sure that I've got that feeling of the shiny copper. I mean, that's the most important thing about this painting is that I'm trying to do a study of the shininess and the color of the copper. So I feel like the color is pretty much spot on, but I still don't have that shine. So I might just go back in and put in some really thin light highlights with pure white. And then when that dries, I can always do a slight glaze over with some vermilion and that'll warm it up. Something else I'm noticing as well is that the light bouncing off of the copper saucepan from the light above is producing a slight um, light colored copper color just in front of the saucepan on the ground. So I might do that reflected light too with just my lightest copper tone. Something like that just really helps the object connect with the space that it's in. And um, same reason why I put the slight bit of mid-tone back behind there. Just having little bits um, poking through kind of helps the overall composition come together. Now I might just put some more darks in. And the only thing that I see I'm missing now is the other side of the ladle. I can actually see it in there. It's quite dark, but not as dark as the background. So I'll just take a bit of my dark purple and put it in there. I might work in a bit of um, wet into wet to get it to stand out. Actually, that purple's plenty light enough, so I'm gonna go back into some dark and I'll cut back in. So now that my white highlights are done, I might try to do a quick glaze with that vermilion and then I think I'll call it a day. And if you think you've overdone it with the glaze or it's just looking a bit too obvious, you can always just wipe out a bit with the rag. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's not the best painting I've ever painted, but I think I got a sense of the copper and I'm pretty happy with the overall composition and how things came together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.